This is not financial advice. I'm recording a video about my stock portfolio in my second account. Few months ago, I made a video showing my stock portfolio in my primary account and the holdings in that account did not change significantly. So I did not make an update. If they change significantly, I'll make an update video. If you have not seen my portfolio in my primary account, I'm going to leave a link in the comment and I'll pin it so you can access it easily. Now let's get to my secondary account. As you can see on my screen, the total gain is about 35% in the past three years. This 35% gain in three years is not too great, but at the same time, it's not too bad. We are currently in a very tough macroeconomic environment and the stocks are down. And when the market comes up, this gain should be much better. As you all know, in my primary portfolio, the gain is significantly higher. In this account, I have a portfolio with about 20 stocks. As you can see on the screen, I have representation from oil and gas, auto industry, tech industry, consumer goods, banking, healthcare, and also telecom. You can see the stock ticker, adjusted cost per share, and also the adjusted gain. At the last column, you can see the term. You will see multiple, short, and long. When you see multiple and long, it means that I have hold this stock for over a year. And when you see short, that means I've purchased this stock less than a year ago. I typically do not touch this account as much. I do not even open this account too often. Maybe I open it like once in a month. So this stock portfolio did not change significantly in the past three years. As you know, I have ExxonMobil, Tesla, AMD, Chevron, Microsoft, Meta, Zscaler, Google, Starbucks, Bank of America, Gilead, Amazon, US Bank, Disney, PayPal, JD, AT&T, Intel, Lemonade, and Big C. 90% of these companies are very well established. They're not penny stocks. They have been around in the business for more than a decade. Let's now look at the top five winners and top five losers and what I have learned from them. In the winners list, we see ExxonMobil where my cost base is about $45, but it's at $106 now. That represents a gain of 132%. I bet on oil and gas stocks when COVID hit. Then Tesla, my average cost is $97, but it's at $184 now. AMD, I bought at $59, it's at $108, that's almost 80% gain. Then Chevron, I bought it at $90, and currently it's at $157, that's about 73% gain. And Microsoft, when I did the video, I've told you all, my cost per share is in the order of like $210, and it's at $315 now, so that's about 50% gain. The top five losers, the worst one is Big C. I bought this stock at $73 and currently it's at $7.9. That's almost 90% drop. And when I first bought this stock, I did not focus on the fundamentals. I was chasing the hype. When the stock went public, people said that this is going to be the next Shopify and without looking into the financial statements, I blindly jumped into the stock and I've paid the price. If it were now, I would never touch stocks like this. I would at least wait for a few quarters before I take a significant position. And it was a big mistake, but at least I've learned a lesson of not buying these IPO companies with a lot of hype. Next, Lemonade, I lost 70%. My cost basis is $60 per share and it's at $18 now. That's a drop of 70%, which is huge. I don't think I can ever recover this money. And it was again, a huge mistake. Uh, I got caught up with this disruptive innovation without paying attention to the business model and how much money they are losing and what is their strategy for cross-selling. And obviously it was a huge mistake to buy lemonade at $60 price. With respect to Intel, I don't regret buying Intel at $50. Um, I think it can get back there. I may not make huge gains, but at least I can recover my money with Intel. The fourth biggest loser is AT&T. I saw the dividend of 7% and I thought, okay, even if the stock doesn't appreciate significantly, I'm getting that 7%, but the stock is down about 30% and all the dividend I got did not still cover the losses. So that was a huge lesson learned. 
uh, with respect to dividend stocks. After the purchase of AT&T, I've told myself that I'm not going to buy any stock for its dividend. I will look for a 2x in five years and if that stock pays a dividend, then that's good. Otherwise, I will not chase dividends. I will only look at company's fundamentals and see if the business can 2x with reasonable assumptions in the next five years. So that was the lesson learned with T. With respect to JD, they have great fundamentals, but we know that China stocks are lagging the market. My cost basis was about $48 and it's at $35 now, but I'm confident that I can recover from this loss. So I don't regret buying JD at such a high price. As you all know, I'm actually dollar cost averaging in another account, but this account, as I said, I do not even open it once in a month. So I'm going to keep these holdings as is. And if there is a dead cat bounce, I'm going to sell Big C, Lemonade and AT&T, but I'm planning to keep Intel and JD. So this is it with my second account. In summary, I have very good names, very established names in my portfolio. And overall gain is about 35% in three years, which is not too bad. At least I did not lose money overall. But I've learned some valuable lessons after buying the stocks that actually dropped 70% or more. So now you know my stock holdings in my primary account and this secondary account. I do have another account, a third account, and I'm going to share its holdings and gains in future, in near future, probably in the next few months. Thank you so much for watching. Please provide feedback if you have any.